save 10% with my code Bobby10. Just kidding, guys. Today's offer is much greater than a saving of 10%. I teamed up with my Muslim brothers and we created Pure Passage. Imagine sending the reward of Umrah this Ramadan to someone you really loved but had already departed from this dunya. Or they're really sick and they cannot perform Umrah at all. Imagine the feeling of honoring his or her memory and expressing your love and devotion while still ensuring that they receive this gift. The reward of performing Umrah. As a new revert, I just learned about this, but you know better than me that performing Umrah is a profound spiritual journey that most Muslims aspire to undertake and you understand the rewards of it. However, for some, this journey can be challenging, especially when their loved ones are sick or have already passed away. At Pure Passage, we understand how important it is to fulfill this obligation for your loved ones. That's why we offer our professional and reliable service to perform Umrah on behalf of your sick or deceased parents, spouse or any other relatives. We believe that everyone should have the opportunity to fulfill this sacred act even if they are unable to do so themselves and equally understand that the physical and financial challenges of performing Umrah yourself on behalf of your loved ones can be overwhelming. That's where Pure Passage comes in. We take care of everything and make sure that your loved one's Umrah is performed with the utmost care and attention to detail. So let us help you earn this immense reward for your loved ones by performing Umrah on their behalf. Contact us today and let's make it happen. All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, today's video is a little bit weird because I just had a dream last night dreaming about the number 19. Then I remembered that months ago, some of my subscribers told me that the number 19 plays a significant role in the Quran. So I woke up this morning and searched for the number 19 in the Quran. This is why we will react to the miracle of number 19 in the Quran by Dr. Shabir Ali. I know many of you guys do not like Dr. Shabir Ali. So if you have any other videos on this topic that are better than his video, please let me know in the comment section. For today, this will have to do. With no further ado, let's have a look. Welcome to Let the Quran Speak. I'm Aisha, your host. Let's Salam continue our Aisha. discussion on mathematical miracles in the Quran as part of our series, Quran, Is It Really the Word of God? Today, we'll focus on the specific occurrence of the number 19 in the Quran and how it relates to our discussion on mathematical miracles in the Quran. Let's sit down with Dr. Shabir Ali. Welcome to the show, Dr. Shabir. Pleasure to be on. So we're continuing our um, series on Quran. Is it really the word of God? Not so I have to say, I find it a bit strange that she is inviting Dr. Shabir Ali onto the show, even though it is his own YouTube channel and it is his show ultimately. Moreover, I even heard that this is the daughter of Dr. Shabir Ali. So this is a very strange setup for me personally, but maybe I'm not professional enough. Sure. Focusing on a particular, the number 19. Uh, now, how does this relate to probability theory? Well, uh, th um, sometimes we see things falling into place and we say, okay, well, it just happened by coincidence and uh, a lot of times that is exactly what it is just a simple coincidence uh, but uh, okay I have to interrupt yet again coincidence does not exist for the believer coincidence cannot exist whatsoever if we believe in Qadr Allah in the will of God we cannot believe in coincidence whatsoever what we know from probability theory is that uh, yes it depends uh, but uh, what we know from probability theory is that uh, yes it things may happen, uh, fall into place by coincidence, but uh, to have a series of such coincidences is actually very rare. Uh, let's say, for example, I, I uh, flip a coin. Now I see the heads or tails coming up, right? Um, and the chance of it being heads is one half or 50% because there, there is one chance out of sure. two possibilities. It's either heads or tails, yep. and I'm looking for that one mm -hmm. uh, possibility uh, out of the two. Uh, now, to, to get heads twice in a row is actually uh, one half times one half, mm. which is one quarter. 
Okay. In other words, one out of four, because if you keep, if you flip it two times, you can. There are four different outcomes which are possible, and you need heads each time. So you need, you need actually one. You need one possibility out of the four that mm -hmm. could occur, of course. Uh, meaning both are, are heads. And if you do it three times in a row, the probability of getting heads on each uh, spin uh, is actually one out of eight now. Yeah. So, so your, your chances, if and then three 16, times, then 32. Different outcomes which are possible, and right. you want one specific outcome that you have heads on each one of them. Yeah. Uh, so the, the more you, you, you flip, the, the, the lesser a chance you have that you have your desired outcome. Sure. Now, if we, that's with a coin where there are two possibilities, either head or tails, right? If you go to uh, use a, uh, a dice, which uh, use a die which has six faces, the probability of getting one particular face, let's say you want the number five for some reason. Most people like to get six, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, I was going to say. Uh, but, but let's say you wanted to get the number five for some reason. Now, to get that number five, you roll the, uh, the die, uh, the probability of getting that five one is out one out of six, because there's six different mm -hmm. outcomes you can get, number yeah. one, two, three, all the way to six, but you want that specific one, it's one out of five, uh, one out of six. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you want to get the five on two throws in a row, then now it is one out of 36, it's, uh, because now so you, you, you have yeah. 36 different outcomes, and you want five on each one of them. That's mm. true. Okay, so um, th that's one specific outcome out of the 36. And if you want three <laughs> throws and five on each one of them, it's one out of 216. Your math is really good. Well, <laughs> I mean, I've done this before. <laughs> yeah. So the, I, you see now that the chance of getting your desired result is becoming slimmer and slimmer sure. if you're doing a number of them in a row. Uh, now, if we work, let's suppose we're working with a, with a die which has uh, six faces, right? Imagine a die that has 19 faces. It's hard to imagine because to get them all yeah. even, mm -hmm. um, it but, but now, just to see the numbers, uh, so to get the one desired number, if you're working with a die that has 19 faces, is one out of 19. And if you do it two times in a row, and you want to get the same number on each roll, then it's one out of 361. Which would be very times unlikely. 19. It's very, very, very mm -hmm. unlikely. Mm -hmm. So now, now we, we, we see that there are certain things in the Quran that uh, work out to either 19 or a, a multiple of 19. And to get one of these read, uh, numbers coming out like this, the, the probability of each one is one out of 19. And to get two in a row is like one out of 361, mm. 19 times 19. Uh, so this is very rare. And to find this in the Quran um, would indicate to us that uh, the divine hand is behind the Quran. And uh, it, it is God's mind who, who put the Quran to be the way it is. It's not by human invention. And who, someone obviously did this research, right, in this area of focus. So d can you elaborate a little bit on that? Yeah, yeah the first please. person to come up with this uh, finding is a man by the name of Dr. Rashad Khalifa. He had lived in, um, in Arizona. Uh, in Tucson, and uh, he uh, was of Egyptian background, but he was an engineer, and he knew his way around computers. He fed the Quranic data into a computer program, and then he com uh, computed things. And he found that a lot of things came out uh, as products of 19. Uh, and uh, he, he exaggerated. Like how? Is it something like the claim that the word day is mentioned 365 times, the word month is mentioned 30 times, etc., etc.? Is this what adds up to the number of 19? They're not really explaining it here, so please let me know in the comments section where the number 19 appears. Claims. The, uh, later on, when people checked uh, some of his claims, they found that uh, sometimes the data seems to be fudged a little bit. Some things did not actually work out to 19 the way he said. Okay. Uh, plus, he made the exaggerated claims about himself. He said that he, he is God's messenger for the current time to bring forth this information to the <laughs> modern world. And uh, in, in Sunni People Islam, get it's obsessed not accepted that there will be another so messenger easily, after our Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And so his uh, <laughs> personal claims uh, were... Um, were and he used a computer. And I'm also the prophet. some of his numbers were, were <laughs> found to be incorrect. But when, when all of that dust of debate had settled, uh, some other students of the Quran continued to, to check and double check uh, the findings and come up with some findings on their own as well. 
And in the end, uh, we, we uh, have concluded that even though we reject uh, the claims of Rashad Khalifa himself, there are certain things about the Quran which are undeniable. This is about the book itself, and we don't reject the book. And we don't reject the obvious findings which are connected with, with the book. And what are some of the, some of the examples? Well, the we Quran? find that uh, the Quran actually draws our attention to, to 19. Uh, in a verse of the How? Quran, in the 74th chapter, the 30th verse, uh, the Quran says, Alayha tis'ata ashar, over it are 19. And uh, within the context, what it means is that there were 19 angels guarding hell. So, okay. so it's not so much about the number 19 itself uh, as a phenomenon in the Quran. It's just but talking it's about 19 angels mm -hmm. guarding hell. Uh, but uh, Rashad Khalifa took that to be 19 like as a pattern in the Quran. But uh, so we're not saying this means that there is a 19 pattern in the Quran. It means there are 19 angels guarding hell. But at the same time, it led somebody to think that there is a possibility of 19 being a mathematical system embedded in the Quran. And indeed, we are finding that, that 19 pops up in some very key places, which draw our attention to which ones? Uh, the, the creators. When I clicked on this video text. to find out so where the miracle is. So what are is? some of the other examples? Yeah, so right example. here, where it says over at our 19, that's in the 30th verse. The very next verse, the 31st verse of that 70 fourth uh, surah okay. explains in detail why God made 19 angels to guard hell and it says that this is or in order to uh, strengthen the faith of the believers and uh, even to give certainty to the people of the book who might be looking at the Quran and uh, at the same time this same phenomenon will cause people who want to doubt to say, well, you know, what does God mean by all of this? Uh, sure. To deride the information. Now, this verse, which goes into such great detail explaining the, the wisdom behind the 19 angels, actually comprises 57 words, which is 19 times 3. Oh, wow. Yes. And uh, which we, we know to be okay. a rare phenomenon, that it's a product of 19. Then we, we go to, uh, to what preceded this, uh, this verse in this uh, surah, and, and we see that the first, 30th, uh, the first 30 verses uh, actually comprise uh, 57 words, uh, 95 words, which is 19 times 5. And the first 19 no, uh, uh, verses comprise 57 words, which is 19 times 3. Mm -hmm. mm. And, and what is even more uh, interesting is that, you know, the, the, the passage reads, and then we come to the mention of the word 19, so over it are 19. If we count all of the letters in the f from the beginning of that chapter all the way to the word 19, just before the word 19, there are 361 letters, which is 19 times 19. So it's as if we're counting the words okay. we're saying 19 times we're definitely 1, onto something times now. 2, 19 that's very times interesting. 3, 19 times 18, 19 times 19, right on and the then dot right and there it says mm -hmm. 19 in word, in a word, right? Wow. Uh, tisata Asher, two words which make up the word so 19. So it all led up in, in to the 19. Word. And do we know, is it, uh, like I guess within the context, obviously the number 19 is significant in this area. Are there other numbers as well, or I is this study focused on the number 19? Oh, well, well uh, there are other numbers. We will see in a later um, episode, we'll have to leave it for a later mm -hmm. episode, that uh, there are um, things working out to multiples of seven as well. And seven is also mentioned in the Quran in a significant way. But sticking with 19 for the moment, there are other examples. So this is actually absolutely fascinating because I do know that the number seven has significant spiritual power, if you will. In the New Age movement, people talk about multiple dimensions and whatnot. However, even in the traditional religions, I know that the number seven holds significant spiritual meaning. For example, in Christianity, the number seven is associated with perfection, completeness, and the idea of God's rest after creation. The book of Genesis describes God creating the world in six days and resting on the seventh, which is why the seventh day of the week, Saturday or Sunday, depending on the tradition, is considered a day of rest and worship. Or in Islam, the number seven is also associated with completion and perfection. For example, Muslims believe that there are seven heavens and seven earths, and that the Quran contains seven verses that are repeated throughout the text. Or or in Hinduism, the number seven is associated with the chakras or energy centers in the body. There are seven main chakras, each representing a different aspect of consciousness and spiritual development. Or in Buddhism, the number seven is associated with the seven factors of enlightenment, which are mindfulness, investigation, energy, joy, tranquility, 
concentration and equanimity. So as you can see, throughout the faith traditions, numbers do hold a significant meaning. With 19 for the moment, there are other examples, if, if you of allow course, me, yes, and if time, time permits. Uh, the uh, this, the 72nd uh, chapter of the Quran um, is uh, uh, entitled Surat al-Jinn, and uh, that chapter comprises 285 words, uh, which is 19 times 15. Uh, the, that uh, uh, chapter, um, if, if we look at the last word in, in each verse, those, those last words uh, comprise 114 letters, and 114 is the number of surahs in the entire Quran. Uh, the, uh, uh, the, the first chapter of the Quran said to be revealed to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, according to some Muslim traditions, is the 96th chapter. Uh, but not, uh, not the entire chapter, just the first five verses. And these first five verses uh, comprise 19 words. And if you count the letters, there are 76 letters, which is 19 times 4. Wow. And, and if we look at the entire chapter, that entire chapter comprises of uh, 285 letters, which is 19 times 15. And it so happens that that chapter comprises 19 verses. And it is the 19th chapter from the end of the, of the book. I've never, mm. I mean, it, it's sort of very shocking because I've never really looked into this, but it is, that is Yeah, there's there so many coincidences that, um, you know, So what be would you believe does this just mean? Just this is just a, a I would like to hear it from him. There are some surahs of the Quran that begin with what we call now mysterious letters. Mysterious because we don't know the meanings. We, we just know that they're there. They've uh, as far back as we can trace. They were part of the Quran. And uh, they don't carry any meaning because it's like saying A, B, C. Maybe they name something. Maybe it's like uh, an initial for somebody's name. Or I can't believe that the word of God has no meaning. Just a few random words. That cannot be. I personally believe that every single word in the Quran holds powerful meaning. If we know about it or not, maybe it is not for us to find out right now. Maybe later, I cannot settle and say, "Oh, we don't know, and therefore it has no meaning." Name or whatever that does make but sense. But in the Quran, we don't know why these letters are there. Just like there, they don't form any words. They're yeah, just we don't know. Letters. There is one surah of the Quran that starts with the letter Q and only the letter Q. Uh, that's the equivalent Kaf in Arabic, and and the surah is actually named Surah Kaf, which is the fiftieth uh, chapter of the Quran. Now, it, it turns out that if we count the number of times this letter cough occurs within that chapter, uh, there are exactly 57 uh, occurrences of that letter cough, uh, which is 19 times 3. Um, now 57 you, times throughout the Quran? Uh, throughout that particular oh, surah. That particular that surah. Oh, wow. Surah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now, there, there is uh, another chapter that has this letter Kaf am amidst other letters. This is the 42nd chapter of the Quran, the Surah Ashura. Now, uh, it says Hamim Ainsin Kaf. So it has the Kaf right in there. Uh, that surah as well has this letter Kaf occurring exactly 57 times in that surah, which is 19 times 3. Wow. Now, uh, some people said that uh, Kaf occurring at the beginning of the 50th chapter stands for Quran because that's the letter that spells the word Quran. Would make uh, sense. Uh, we can't be sure that that's the meaning because we said the meaning is mysterious. We don't know. But if we think about this for a moment, there are 57 Kafs in that surah and 57 in the other surah. The two together make up 114, which is the number of surahs in the entire Quran. And 114, mm. by the way, uh, is 19 times 6. So the number of chapters in the Quran okay. is a product of 19. It's undeniable. Now, the, the, uh, so now we need to know Quran what is, the 19 you know, is about. What does it stand for? Rahim. And uh, this uh, phrase, uh, which means in the name of God, the beneficent, the merciful one, comprises 19 letters. And theoretically can be written with 22 letters. But uh, the tradition has it that it's been written with the 19, 19 letters, letters mm -hmm. all throughout our history. Yeah. But, but uh, w when people first wrote it with 19 letters, they didn't say, let's write it with 19 letters. It just so happens that that's how they wrote it, using the writing conventions mm. at the time. And it turns out now, because we have kept that convention, that uh, whereas modern convention would actually call for the writing of this with 22 letters, uh, this, this ancient convention, given at the time from, from the time Uthman wrote down the Quran, um, it's with the 19 letters. And this is how it appears right now in the Quran as well, in 19 it, with letters? With the 19 letters, yes. And this phrase itself, because it's found at the beginning of every surah, 
um, the natural uh, conclusion is that it occurs 114 times as well, except that the ninth chapter of the Quran does not have right. it for some mysterious reason. And various the ninth explanation chapter? The ninth chapter, mm. which is called Surah Al-Bara'ah or <laughs> Surah Al-Tawbah. It, it does not have the Basmala written at, at the beginning like other surahs do. So now it looks right. like only 113. However, the 27th chapter of the Quran uh, does mention the Basmala in the midst of the surah itself. So that one surah has two of them, one at the beginning as to usual and yeah. one within. So, so that one within seems to compensate for the one which is not there at the beginning of Surah Al-Bara'ah and now we have 114 of them. Now, if we think about the distance between these two chapters, the one that does not have the basmala, as we would expect, and the other one that has the basmala in the midst of the surah, where we didn't expect it to be, we see that these two form a block of, uh, uh, of, of 19 surahs. Wow. <laughs> because from the 9th to the mm -hmm. 27th wow. inclusive, there are 19 surahs. Very, very interesting, Dr. Pierce. So if anyone, I know, do we have um, somewhere where people can read this? Because it is very interesting information. Well, w we have a short document about this, which is put on our website. So we would invite our viewers to go there. Perfect. Very interesting. Thank you, Dr. Shabir. You're welcome. All right, guys, and this is it for today's video. Absolutely mind-blowing stuff. However, one thing was missing for me personally. Now we found out that the number 19 is occurring all the time, over and over again in the Quran. However, we do not know what the spiritual significance of the number 19 is. Dr. Shabir Ali did not give us an explanation. And that being said, it's not really a critique for Dr. Shabir Ali because I know that nobody really has the set meaning the set interpretation of the number 19. Nevertheless, I'm very curious myself and therefore I did some research. So as you can see here, I found out that the special spiritual significance of the number 19 in Islamic theology is believed to be related to the concept of unity and harmony. Some Muslims believe that the repeated occurrence of the number 19 in the Quran is a sign of God's perfect order and unity in the universe. Others believe that the number 19 represents the unity of God as it is a multiple of the number 1, which is considered the most important number in Islamic theology. In this view, the repeated occurrences of the number 19 in the Quran are a symbol of the oneness of God and the harmony of creation. Another interpretation of the spiritual significance of the number 19 is that it represents a sacred pattern or code even that underlies the structure of the Quran. Some scholars have suggested that the code 19 is a hidden message from God that reveals the true meaning of the Quran and its message of unity and harmony. Overall, the special spiritual significance of the number 19 in Islamic theology is a topic of debate and interpretation among Muslims. While some see it as evidence of the Quran's divine origins and sign of God's perfect order in the universe, others view it as an interesting curiosity with little practical significance for their faith. And guys, this is all the information I can find about the Islamic meaning of the number 19. If you know anything more, please let me know in the comment section. Lastly, I want to leave you with a little bit of the New Age input here. Because yes, if you've been following this channel back in the day, I used to be into the New Age movement as well. Not consciously, I didn't even know what I was getting myself into. However, I was into psychedelics, spiritual experiences, meditation, yoga and whatnot. So in the New Age movement or spirituality in general, the number 19 is considered a powerful and transformative number symbolizing new beginnings and the start of a new cycle. In numerology, which is the study of numbers and their spiritual significance, the number 19 is reduced to 1 plus 9 equals 10. 1 plus 0 equals 1, which is the number of creation and new beginnings. As you can see, it boils down to 1 yet again. This suggests that the number 19 is associated with fresh starts, new opportunities, and the potential for growth and development. As I said, this is the new age. We would associate the number 1, of course, with one God. Furthermore, the number 19 is also associated with spiritual awakening and enlightenment. Many spiritual teachers and gurus believe that the number 19 represents presents the path of spiritual transformation and the journey towards higher consciousness. 
All right, but that's all the input I could gather. I didn't really get a satisfactory answer for my curiosity, especially not after waking up to a dream of the number 19. I would have to boil it down that the significance of the number 19 for us believers is to worship one God alone. All right, guys, but this is it for today's video. If you liked it, leave it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, guys, please do so. And if you want to support this channel via Patreon, for example, all the links are in the description box below. Thank you so much for the ongoing support guys and as always may god bless you all much love and peace